Let's play word association. When I say Bentley, what comes to mind? If you said uncompromising luxury, you'd be right. With Bentley, the only sacrifice is sacrifice. Their vehicles must do it all, because that's what the buyer expects. Yet we live in a time of increasing scarcity. Surely this means ultra-luxury brands will suffer from greenification. Au contraire! As the world moves away from fossil fuels, Bentley's brand ideals are about to get strengthened via potent yet eco-conscious powertrains in vehicles like this Flying Spur Hybrid. Now I know what you're thinking. The people buying these cars have unlimited income. Why wouldn't they just buy a V8 or W12 powered Flying Spur instead since they can afford the fuel costs? Well, saving money is definitely not the goal because the hybrid is nearly $12,000 more than the V8. It turns out there are several answers, but ultimately the Bentley Flying Spur Hybrid is taking baby steps to normalize electrified motoring. In this video, we're taking a deep dive into Bentley's plug-in hybrid sedan. We'll explain how it redefines the branding notion of having it all. An industry expert will explain what's going on here and why it's not just an EPA compliance car. Before we continue, don't forget to hit that like button if this is the kind of electrified vehicle content you want to see more of. To understand why the Flying Spur Hybrid is a unique and curious proposition, let's take a look at powertrains you could choose instead. The Bentley Flying Spur Hybrid uses a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 coupled to an electric motor, an 18.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, and an eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission. As I mentioned, it's also offered in non-hybrid V8 and W12 variants. Among the three powertrains, the hybrid is the least powerful at 536 horsepower. The Flying Spur eight cylinder slots above it at 542. At the top of the lineup is the W12 with 626 horsepower. Looking at torque, the Flying Spur Hybrid makes 553 pound-feet. V8 models have a smidge more at 568 pound-feet. Once again, the W12 is at the top with nearly 100 pound-feet more. There is one thing the V8 and W12 models can't do though, operate in all-electric mode. Since it's a PHEV, the Flying Spur Hybrid can travel up to 21 miles without the gas engine. When you bring that into the equation, the Bentley can travel up to 430 miles. That nearly ties the V8 variant, which can travel 452 miles per tank. Meanwhile, the W12 is good for 357 miles. Now that you know where the Flying Spur Hybrid lands in the lineup, let's address the question of why a hybrid? Well, it turns out rich people do care about sustainability. At least that's what Bentley's recent research indicates. The company found that 70% of its buyers chose hybrid variants for their environmentally friendly credentials. Last year, one in five Bentegas sold were hybrids, according to Bentley. The vast majority of these owners drove the car in all electric mode during their commutes, which averaged 25 miles every five to seven days. Nearly all of them charged every night too. As an owner who wants to go green, it may be the least powerful version, but it'll still get you into triple digit speeds rapidly. Instant responses from the electric motor, a lag-free engine, and a quick shifting transmission provide a sense of effortlessness. There's always power and it's delivered in endless waves. In EV mode, you get a taste of the future of luxury motoring. Quiet, serene, and isolated from the rest of the world for 21 miles. With insane levels of sound insulation, you get a level of refinement that only an electrified powertrain can provide. Charge the car overnight and you can experience the same sensation again the next day. In its own way, it's a lesson for the Bentley faithful in what electrification can do. This plug-in hybrid powertrain preserves Bentley's identity while reducing emissions. The prodigious power remains, only this time you're also treated to short stints in a cocoon of luxury. Well, even more luxury than normal. Let's be honest, a traditional W12 powered flying spur isn't exactly slumming it. Uh, they're not forcing their customers to change their habits all at once, which would be a very big ask of a Bentley consumer who really uh, has a lot of expectations of the product and does not want to be inconvenienced. You could be forgiven for thinking this is purely a fuel economy play to meet regulatory quotas. However, industry analyst Ed Kim tells us that offering plug-in hybrids is more about getting customers ready for the future to come. Uh, by offering these plug-in hybrids, uh, this is really a transition for the brand. Um, you know, there. I think. I think it's less about skirting regulations uh, for certain markets and more about uh, preparing their customers for an eventual all-electric future.
Bentley's parent company, the Volkswagen Group, is doubling down on electrification, so why go plug-in hybrid first when Audi and Porsche, the other two luxury brands in the VW portfolio, are already offering battery electrics? The answer is simple. The available components don't cut it for the type of vehicles Bentley wants to electrify. The J1 platform underpinning the Porsche Taycan and Audi e-tron GT is a mishmash of other architectures and modified to accommodate batteries. They drive well, but there are compromises due to the underpinnings having roots from internal combustion vehicles. A potential all-electric Bentley built on J1 would lack interior space due to the platform's packaging constraints, which is already an issue in the Taycan and e-tron GT. Not a good look for buyers who expect to be able to stretch out in the lap of luxury. Additionally, there's also the sticky topic of range. Both the Taycan and e-tron GT are EPA rated below 250 miles, which won't be acceptable for Bentley clientele. They want it all, and if they can't travel long distances, that's considered a compromise, especially when you have vehicles like the Lucid Air traveling at least 400 to 500 miles on a charge. You know, that Bentley customer who uh, is unwilling to accept compromises uh, would look at the, you know, 200-ish mile range of a hypothetical J1-based Continental GT and be like, well, what's up with that when, uh, you know, Lucid's got a car for, uh, you know, about the same price or less that uh, goes more than twice that on a charge. Sticking with Flying Spur's current underpinnings, which is shared with the Continental GT and the Porsche Panamera, is the ideal solution. Since that architecture was already developed with hybrid powertrains in mind, Bentley can ease its customers into electrified motoring. Additionally, there's little sacrifice in driving range and performance thanks to the PHEV powertrain. This means the current platform remains until a BEV architecture that can accommodate the size of Bentley's vehicles is available. Yeah, the fact that Bentley doesn't have any EVs right now is really a function of the fact that the hardware is not ready yet. Earlier this year, Bentley announced its first EV will debut in 2025, be the first of five, and be manufactured in the UK. The upcoming BEV-specific modular architecture being developed under the Project Artemis program is the next logical step and will fulfill its have-it-all approach to high-end luxury vehicles. The platform being developed under Project Artemis um, will have much more range. Uh, you know, it's being designed to accommodate the sort of expectations that this ultra-luxury customer uh, demands. Now let's take a look at the other benefits of this flying spur, which goes beyond luxury, comfort, and speed. But first, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit subscribe. You'll find more videos on the latest electrified vehicles like the Lincoln Corsair Grand Touring and Kia EV6 on the EV Pulse channel. If you're all in on BEVs, check out our review of the Mercedes-Benz EQS sedan. Eco credentials, power, handling, comfort. These make the Flying Spur Hybrid a do-it-all sedan. But there's one thing that this electrified four-door can do that its emission-spewing variants cannot. It can drive anywhere. No, it's not a Jeep Wrangler, but here's what I mean. Certain regions of the world have started addressing pollution and congestion issues by tightening regulations involving cars. Cities like Berlin, London, and Paris are among those framing legislation to promote sustainable mobility. These include designated areas where purely internal combustion vehicles can't enter without paying a fine based on their emissions or are completely banned. Beach Street, between London's Barbican and Golden Lane Estates, for example, is one of the first pilot programs for a zero emissions zone in the city, and you can't pass through there unless your vehicle can drive 20 miles or more in all electric mode. Bentleys are very popular in very uh, dense urban markets like London, LA, New York, um, and uh, you know these are all areas where um, having an electrified vehicle uh, can entail some serious perks. Some countries, like Norway, have gone all in on electrification. Despite it being the 11th biggest oil producer in the world last year, it's encouraging the ownership of EVs via incentives and tax breaks. PHEVs and BEVs have the same annual road tax in Norway according to the European Alternative Fuels Observatory. However, Norway's goal is to go all electric, so BEVs are exempted from the value-added tax until the end of 2022, while PHEVs are not. Even after that deadline, the value-added tax for BEVs will be lower than anything that has an internal combustion engine. This is part of a larger climate plan that aims to cut emissions from the transport sector by 50% in 2030 and expand the use of renewable energy. Norway is essentially jumping ahead and giving people good reasons to get an electrified vehicle. 
The Norwegian government is also working on a new tax system to ensure that EVs remain attainable after 2025, showing their commitment to electric mobility. The fact that these plug-in hybrids uh, are also privy to these same perks as a pure electric vehicle uh, for the time being um, actually does serve to help that customer understand that there are also some real benefits of going all electric, things that actually will make their lives even more convenient. Norway's strategy is working. A Reuters report revealed that in 2021, 65% of the nation's vehicle sales were BEVs. That's the largest percentage out of any country. PHAVs were second at 20.8%, while other types of vehicles made up the rest. Europe isn't the only region where tailpipe emissions are a major issue. In the US, it's now a hot topic as the Biden administration pushes for renewable energy and electrified mobility as part of its infrastructure plan. The White House announced that it won't buy any more internal combustion vehicles by 2035. It is also targeted to have 50% of vehicles sold be electrified. This puts the federal initiative on the same level as many progressive states, including California, which has pledged to ban non-electrified vehicle sales by 2035. Whether or not these deadlines hold, affected by global supply shortages and global turmoil, change is coming, and Bentley drivers aren't going to want to be told where they can and can't go. In the case of many of the world's most desirable locales, batteries are going to be your ticket to ride. It's best to view the 2022 Flying Spur Hybrid as the gateway leading to Bentley's next evolution. While the brand develops its BEVs, plug-in hybrids allow it to respond to changing regulations while preserving its values and help its clientele gradually move towards full electrification. It checks all of the boxes that Bentley is known for, all while gaining the ability to experience what's next. For more on the 2022 Bentley Flying Spur Hybrid and other electrified vehicles, visit evpulse.com. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps us produce more reviews and features like this one. Thanks for watching.